Now, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has presented the first union budget of the third Modi government, making some big announcements as well as a statement of intent over the roadmap for the next five years. Now, from employment-linked incentive to changes in the income tax slabs under the new regime, there's a lot to unpack from Budget 2024. Let's quickly take you through some of the highlights that have been announced as far as this particular budget is concerned. The first big takeaway is that there is income tax saving up to 17,500 rupees in the new tax regime for those specific slabs that have been mentioned. The second big takeaway is that income tax relief for four crore salaried individuals is what is coming out of the budget. The third big takeaway is the standard deductions that have been increased from 50,000 to 75,000. That's the standard deduction over there. The fourth big takeaway is the three lakh crore for pro-women schemes. The fifth takeaway that we'll be talking about is the three crore additional house and rural and urban areas. That's a big one. It's, of course, going to provide housing to a huge chunk of Indians over there. Sixth big takeaway is the 100 branches of Post Payments Bank to be set up in the Northeast. Seventh big takeaway, 11 lakh, 11,111 crores for CapEx. Big announcement. The last several years have seen huge investments in CapEx. That trend continues. Eighth big takeaway, 15,000 crores for developing Andhra's capital. A big promise for the TDP that has been fulfilled over here by the center. The ninth big takeaway, financial support for loans up to 10 lakhs rupees for the students as well. Remember, education loans are very costly and that's a key demographic as well. The tenth takeaway, of course, is that new centrally sponsored scheme for skill development in which crores of youngsters are supposed to be uh, skilled up as far as this particular scheme is concerned. Internship to one crore youth in 500 top firms in five years. And this is where the center's role comes in. They're going to be paying for some of that internship as well. The government is going to also facilitate implementation of the DPI in agriculture. The 13th Takeaway is the 26,000 crores for various road projects in Bihar. Remember, another key ally over here that's being placated, the opposition will say. The 14th takeaway is the big boost for the startup ecosystem, which angel tax that has now been abolished. Remember, the Congress is also quick to jump in on this and claim credit. The 15th big takeaway is that 1.5 lakh crores for long-term interest-free loans for states that has been announced. So massive announcement over here. All right, the Prime Minister speaking, we are told, let's cut across live to that. साथियों ये बजट समाज के हर वर्ग को शक्ति देने वाला बजट है ये देश के गांव गरीब किसान को समृद्धि की राह पर ले जाने वाला बजट है पिछले 10 वर्षों में 25 करोड़ लोग गरीबी से बाहर निकले हैं ये जो नियम बिडर क्लास बना है ये बजट उनके सशक्तिकरण की निरंतरता का बजट है इन नौजवानों को अनगिनत नए अवसर देने वाला बजट है इस बजट से शिक्षा और स्किल को नई स्केल मिलेगी ये मिडिल क्लास को नई ताकत देने वाला बजट है ये जनजातीय समाज दलित पिछड़ों को सशक्त करने की मजबूत योजनाओं के साथ आया है इस बजट से महिलाओं की आर्थिक भागीदारी सुनिश्चित करने में मदद मिलेगी इस बजट से छोटे व्यापारियों एमएसएमईस को यानी कि लघु उद्योगों को उसकी प्रगति का नया रास्ता मिलेगा 
बजट में मैन्युफैक्चरिंग पर भी बल है इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर भी बल है इससे नई गति मिलेगी और गति को भी निरंतरता मिलेगी साथियों रोजगार और स्वरोजगार के अभूतपूर्व अवसर बढ़ ये हमारी सरकार की पहचान रही है आज का बजट इसे और सुदृढ़ करता है देश और दुनिया ने पीएलआई स्कीम की सफलता देखी है अब इस बजट में सरकार ने एम्प्लॉयमेंट लिंक इंसेंटिव स्कीम की घोषणा की है इससे देश में करोड़ों करोड़ों नए रोजगार बनेंगे इस योजना के तहत जीवन में पहली नौकरी पाने वाले युवा की पहली तनख्वाह हमारी सरकार देगी स्किल डेवलपमेंट और उच्च शिक्षा के लिए मदद हो या फिर एक करोड़ नौजवानों को इंटर्नशिप की योजना इससे गांव के गरीब के मेरे नौजवान साथी मेरे बेटे बेटी देश की टॉप कंपनियों में काम करेंगे उनके सामने संभावनाओं के नए द्वार खुलेंगे हमें हर शहर हर गांव हर घर एंटरप्रिनर्स बनाना है इसी उद्देश्य से बिना गारंटी के मुद्रा लोन की लिमिट को 10 लाख से बढ़ाकर 20 लाख रुपए किया गया है इससे छोटे कारोबारियों विशेष रूप से महिलाओं दलित पिछड़े आदिवासी परिवारों में स्वरोजगार को बल मिलेगा साथियों हम सब लोग मिलकर भारत को ग्लोबल मैन्युफैक्चरिंग हब बनाएंगे देश का एमएसएमई सेक्टर मध्यम वर्ग से जुड़ा हुआ है एक प्रकार से एमएसएमई सेक्टर की ओनरशिप मध्यम वर्ग ही है और इसी सेक्टर से गरीबों को ज्यादा से ज्यादा रोजगार भी मिलता है छोटे उद्योगों की बड़ी ताकत उस दिशा में हमारा अहम कदम है इस बजट में एमएसएमएस के लिए ईज ऑफ क्रेडिट बढ़ाने वाली नई योजना का ऐलान किया गया है मैन्युफैक्चरिंग और एक्सपोर्ट्स इकोसिस्टम को हर जिले तक ले जाने के लिए बजट में अहम घोषणा की गई है ई कॉमर्स एक्सपोर्ट हब्स और फूड क्वालिटी टेस्टिंग के लिए 100 यूनिट्स ऐसे कदमों से वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन प्रोडक्ट अभियान को गति मिलेगी साथियों ये बजट हमारे स्टार्टअप्स के लिए इनोवेशन इकोसिस्टम के लिए ढेर सारे नए अवसर लेकर आया है स्पेस इकोनॉमी को बढ़ावा देने के लिए एक हजार करोड़ रुपए का फंड हो एंजल टैक्स हटाने का फैसला हो ऐसे कई सारे कदम इस बजट में उठाए गए हैं साथियों रिकॉर्ड हाई कैपेक्स इकोनॉमी का एक ड्राइविंग फोर्स बनेगा 12 नए इंडस्ट्रियल नोड्स देश में नए सैटेलाइट टाउन्स का विकास 
और चौदह बड़े शहरों के लिए ट्रांजिस्ट प्लान इससे देश में नए इकोनॉमिक हब विकसित होंगे और बहुत बड़ी संख्या में नए रोजगार बनेंगे साथियों आज डिफेंस एक्सपोर्ट्स रिकॉर्ड स्तर पर है इस बजट में डिफेंस सेक्टर को आत्मनिर्भर बनाने के लिए अनेक प्रावधान किए गए हैं आज पूरी दुनिया में भारत के प्रति आकर्षण बड़ा है और भारत में टूरिज्म के क्षेत्र में नई संभावनाएं बनी हैं टूरिज्म क्षेत्र गरीब और मध्यम वर्ग के लिए कई अवसर लेके आता है इस बजट में टूरिज्म क्षेत्र पर भी विशेष बल दिया गया है साथियों एनडीए सरकार ने पिछले 10 साल में यह सुनिश्चित किया है कि गरीब और मध्यम वर्ग को लगातार टैक्स से राहत मिलती रहे इस बजट में भी इनकम टैक्स में कटौती और स्टैंडर्ड डिडक्शन में भी वृद्धि का फैसला लिया गया है टीडीएस के नियमों को भी सरल किया गया है इन कदमों से हर टैक्स पेयर को अतिरिक्त बचत होने वाली है साथियों देश के विकास के लिए भारत के पूर्वी क्षेत्र का संपूर्ण विकास पूर्वोदय के विजन द्वारा हमारे इस अभियान को नई गति नई ऊर्जा मिलेगी हम पूर्वी भारत में कई महत्वपूर्ण इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर जैसे हाईवेज वाटर प्रोजेक्ट्स और पावर प्रोजेक्ट्स का निर्माण कर विकास को नई गति देंगे साथियों इस बजट का एक बहुत बड़ा फोकस देश के किसान है अन्न भंडारण के लिए दुनिया की सबसे बड़ी स्कीम के बाद अब हम वेजिटेबल प्रोडक्शन क्लस्टर्स बनाने जा रहे हैं इससे एक और छोटे किसानों को फल सब्जियों अन्य उपज के लिए नए बाजार मिलेंगे बेहतर दाम मिलेंगे तो दूसरी ओर हमारे मध्यम वर्ग के लिए फल सब्जियों की उपलब्धता बढ़ेगी और परिवार के लिए पोषण भी सुनिश्चित होगा कृषि क्षेत्र में भारत का आत्मनिर्भर बनना समय की मांग है इसलिए दलहन तिलहन की पैदावार बढ़ाने के लिए किसानों को मदद की घोषणा की गई है साथियों देश में गरीबी समाप्त हो गरीब का सशक्तिकरण हो इस दिशा में भी आज के बजट में प्रमुख घोषणाएं की गई है गरीबों के लिए तीन करोड़ नए घर बनाना तय हुआ है जनजातीय उन्नत ग्राम अभियान सेचुरेशन अप्रोच के साथ पांच करोड़ आदिवासी परिवारों को मूलभूत सुविधाओं से जोड़ा जाएगा इसके अलावा ग्राम सड़क योजना पच्चीस हजार नए ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों को ऑल वेदर रोड से जोड़ेगी इसका लाभ देश के सभी राज्यों के दूर दराज गांवों को मिलेगा साथियों आज का बजट नए अवसर नई ऊर्जा लेकर आया है ये ढेर सारे नए रोजगार स्वरोजगार के अवसर लेकर आया है ये बेटर ग्रोथ और ब्राइट फ्यूचर लेकर आया है आज का बजट भारत को दुनिया की तीसरी सबसे बड़ी आर्थिक ताकत बनाने के उस पूरी प्रक्रिया में कैटलिस्ट का काम करेगा विकसित भारत की एक ठोस नींव रखेगा सभी देशवासियों को बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं 
So that's the Prime Minister talking about uh, really the various schemes from MSME to skill development, important announcements made for farmers, for various sections of society. And we've been bringing you several of those updates. Let's quickly go across to our panel joining us. Of course, here in the studio, we have Dr. Anand Ranathan, uh, author, editorial director of Swaraja R. Jagannathan is with us. We also have Dr. Santosh Mehrotra, senior economist. Rointon Sidwa is a partner of Deloitte India. Joining us from outside the studio, we have Tehseen Poonawala, political analyst. We also have with us Rohan Gupta, who's a national spokesperson of the BJP. Uh, joining us also at this moment is uh, Naina Nal Kidwai, past president of FIKI and chairperson of Rothschild and Co. India, as well as uh, chair India Sanitation Coalition. Vivek Salas, national spokesperson of Samajwadi Party, is also with us. But Naina Nal Kidwai, let me come to you first. Your reactions to this budget, uh, of course, a huge focus as far as CapEx is concerned, but a lot of the new schemes that have been announced how do you look at them? You know, I think, uh, uh, and we've just heard the Prime Minister, uh, there's due cause for excitement on the whole MSME push. Uh, it's clearly a very critical sector for India uh, with over 34% of manufacturing output being in the MSME areas. And it's an area that was needing some help. Uh, if you look at the budget announcements, and I find some of the finance-related ones particularly exciting, the SMEs are uh, uh, seeing the potential guarantee uh, of uh, up to 100 crores. There's a new assessment model for SMEs in terms of credit uh, by the public sector banks. So the ease of making finance available to this sector is clearly very much on the agenda uh, for government to go and push banks, but also to provide some of the incentives to do that. Mudra loans are being increased from 10 to 20 lakhs for those that have uh, repaid their earlier tranches and therefore shown their credit worthiness. Uh, the reduction of the treads threshold for mandatory onboarding. I think these are all very, very positive steps. A second area, and this was a big Fiki ask, and in fact, something I'd captured in an article earlier in uh, your paper in the Economic Times, uh, was the plug and play aspect of industrial parks which is a very important aspect uh, of enabling MSMEs, where we've seen uh, announcement now of 12 industrial parks being sanctioned and focus therein, focus on rental housing uh, and dormitory type accommodation, for uh, which would really be helpful right. for smaller companies uh, where uh, housing is not easy to provide. So much in there for the MSME sectors. And the second one I want to highlight as a space I work in is the whole urban uh, development space where uh, the government's success in Swachh Bharat Mission is getting re replicated uh, through, again, increased assistance. And there's a 3% increase in the budgetary allocation for uh, Swachh Bharat Rural from the last fiscal. Uh, so not a huge increase, but at least it's up. And right. the budgetary allocation for SBM Urban, which uh, has seen an almost 100% increase right. I, from I last year. I want to draw your attention to also the employee-linked incentives. Now, this is something normally we see the opposition criticize the government. And this particular case of this announcement and the internship announcement, you know, there's been a sort of credit war because you have the opposition saying that Congress in particular, that this was part of our manifesto, so on and so forth. But in terms of the announcement itself, do you think that this is going to create a huge incentive for manufacturers and others to actually, you know, go for these employee-linked incentives because a lot of talk of jobless growth that we've seen over the last few years, do you think that, uh, you know, stands to perhaps come to an end now with these schemes being implemented? So I, I think it's a step, a very big step in the right direction. It's the first time we're really seeing significant employment benefit-related uh, job guarantee type of schemes coming through. I think at the end of the day, every industry will evaluate this for where it sits already in terms of its own growth. And labor-intensive industries, uh, you know, like toys and leather and textiles and apparels, which are being looked at to be incentivized, whether through PLIs or through measures such as this, uh, will clearly benefit. In itself, employee guarantee schemes aren't an incentive alone. Do they ease the way? Do they encourage? Do they go to companies to look at this? Absolutely. So very welcome as a step. Right. Also, I'd like to get you in on the personal taxes aspect, because as we were discussing earlier here in the studio, while there have been about uh, 17,500 rupees cut in terms of the personal tax, capital gains tax has been a slightly different story there with the actual percentage also being increased. How do you see the new tax proposals that are coming out of this budget? 
Well, the market's telling us a lot in terms of the capital gains tax. And uh, my worry is that we're spending so much time discussing this that we're missing with is a lot of meaty and good in the budget. But as you asked, uh, I think there is a story out there which is putting money back in the hands uh, of people. And therefore, you're seeing some of the consumption type of stocks going up. And uh, that is a plus. Uh, personally, I'm disappointed on the capital gains tax tinkering. I feel uh, we've only just sort of reached the sort of levels where domestic mutual funds were, in fact, keeping the FII uh, volatility at bay. And uh, it's something which I hope uh, will not suffer through this. Uh, maybe the markets do recover. At the end of the day, uh, corporate performance is what is going to drive the markets. Okay. So everything that this budget holds out in terms of promise on corporate performance and uh, let's not forget, there is a, a promise of reduction uh, for foreign MNCs. And we have a lot of foreign multinationals in India, uh, FDI therein uh, being uh, therefore encouraged. Uh, these are all uh, plus points as well on the other side. So as long as corporate performance stacks up, as long as people get more money in their hands to spend in terms of consumption, uh, these would be the much more important long-term plays than the temporary disappointment on the capital's gains right. tax. Again, which, of course, I'd like to thank you. I'd like to thank you, ma'am, for joining us on the panel. We also have Vishesh Chandyok, who's a co-chairman of the CI Task Force on uh, Insolvency and Bankruptcy. Joining us here in the studio also is Dr. Rohit Azar. But let me quickly come to our panel on that. You know, one of the points being made here, Rohitan, on capital gains uh, is something that is perhaps... Uh, Spooking the markets, it's going to be talked about a lot, but is that going to really overshadow some of the other announcements which are pretty significant announcements and many would say a departure from the approach of the government, at least that's been seen in the past? Sure. So while on the flip side, the capital gains tax rate has gone up, one thing that we are seeing in the fine print is they've also taken away indexing. Now, indexing uh, is a provision that helps you increase uh, the value of your cost of acquisition and benchmark that value with inflation. Now, uh, the, the, there's a very short line in the uh, memorandum that simply says that in view of simplification, we're taking away indexing, but indexing uh, actually uh, prevented you from being taxed on the increase in value just from inflation. So I think that uh, part is a retrograde. On the flip side, however, I'm seeing this angel tax removal as a step in the right direction for ease of doing business. This is definitely something that investors looked at when they were uh, investing into India. And it meant a lot of more uh, diligence and paperwork. And doing away with angel tax is a big thing. Another thing that's probably lost out in some of the announcements is uh, the variable capital company, hmm. which the finance minister has proposed this time. Again, a completely new structure for private equity to invest into India. Again, a very positive development, I would All say. All right, let's quickly bring it. In fact, let me quickly uh, read out the aspect of the ELI that we were discussing a short while earlier. And in fact, this is perhaps one of the biggest announcements that's been floated in this year's budget, that of the employee-linked incentive. After the success of the performance-linked incentive in certain sectors, the focus has now shifted to job creation. And this ELI scheme has been announced in three parts. Let's quickly go through all of the parts of... Uh, the ELI scheme. Uh, this is the first aspect of this. It's talking about assistance for those who are newly entering the workforce. It's expected to benefit 210 lakh youth or 2.1 crore youth. This is scheme A for first-time employees. The DBT in three installments uh, up to 15,000 rupees is the announcement here that is part of scheme A. They also talk about the eligibility of 1 lakh per month. That's, in fact, as far as the employment scheme is concerned. And this is scheme A. There is, of course, also other aspects of the scheme. If you can quickly pull out the other parts of it. Scheme B is job creation in manufacturing expected to benefit 30 lakh youth entering employment and will incentivize employment incentives to be provided as specified scale in the first four years of employment. Uh, this is, of course, as far as scheme B is concerned. If you can also bring up the other aspects of this. Yes, and this is scheme C. Now, this is expected to support the employers. It's expected to bring in benefits of 50 to 50 lakh people. They, it will cover additional employment in all sectors and also all additional employment within the salary of 1 lakh rupees per month that is expected to be covered. The government is to reimburse employers up to 
3,000 rupees a month towards the EPFO. And this is, of course, the three aspects of this scheme. Let's quickly take this across to our guests who are with us here in the studio. Mr. Jagannathan, what are you looking at in terms of the potential impact of this scheme? Because it's been thought out. It's clearly, you know, not something that's just happened to the drop of the hat. They've looked at the specific areas where they needed a push and they're trying to incentivize that. Yeah, clearly, see, the government has always been talking about skill development, this, that and all. But the way they looked at it, they looked at it from the supply side. They merely thought we must develop the skills and somehow they'll find the jobs. For the first time, they're seeing that this can be a demand side issue. That is, there must be demand for skills, so you are pushing apprenticeships. You're also pushing uh, companies to take on more people. So the demand is created for these uh, people to upskill and to create, take on jobs. And that is exactly what is being attempted. For the, for the first time, the main focus of a budget has been on jobs, jobs and more jobs for youth. Youth unemployment, after all, is very high in India. And that has potential, uh, both political and other consequences. Mm. So I say the approach is right. Mm. Whether how much it will work depends on uh, both the center, state level capacity to implement these schemes and the corporate sector's willingness to absorb these additional things. Because, uh, with, But I think it's moving in the right direction. And uh, the disincentivization of, uh, say, uh, excessive dependence on capital instead of labor hmm. is continuing in one trend. You know, that has been the theme of the Modi government for a while now. Right. They will... Yeah. Let me quickly bring in, uh, in fact, Taisin Poonawala on that because Taisin Poonawala, a number of Congress leaders are quick to jump and claim credit saying that we have actually said so or actually put out the precursor and the government's been inspired by the Congress manifesto. Now, clearly, of course, uh, uh, this is something that is a bit of a departure because normally you see the government and the opposition spar on budget provisions. In this case, it's uh, claiming credit. Yes, on some of the provisions of the budget. But overall, this budget, uh, once I started reading the fine print, is so anti-middle class, or so anti-Times Now audience. It is so anti the honest taxpayers, which are the Times Now audience. It is stunning. It is, it's a tragedy. I mean, we should all be hanging our heads in shame. They have removed indexation. Um, they have removed indexation on real estate, which means if you bought a property, let me explain to your viewers in 2004, say for 40 lakhs, and today you want to sell it for say 3 crore rupees in 2024, you will be paying long term capital gains on the full 3 crore rupees. What is this going to do? This is going to bring cash back into the business. So honest people like me and you, mother, are completely, for lack of another word, smashed. They've mm -hmm. completely destroyed it. Then they brought in long term capital gains. Then they have brought, uh, as if, as if uh, we take the, we, we invest the money in the markets on their assurances. We take the risk and now they're taking money. Uh, they, they bring brought in long-term capital gains. Then the worst is the deduction for standard deduction. 75,000 from 50,000 to 75,000. This is massive for the salary class. 2,000 rupees a month. Mother with 2,000 rupees a month. Imagine what you and I can do. We can go out there and live a great life. And everything is taxed. No tax breaks. No change in ta uh, tax life. This government has destroyed the middle class. Okay. It is out of the Gupta to come in on that. Rohan Gupta, this what? government has destroyed the middle class, says Taisin Purawala. Please respond to him. See, the opposition has to say that they have been inspired by our uh, manifesto. I don't think so. I have anything to say. It is a clear cut, indirect phase of the budget. And the country knows this budget has every, everything for uh, everybody. Something for middle class, there is something for farmers, there is something for youth. So I think this is a balancing act the government is able to do. And it's it's very difficult to maintain the fiscal uh, discipline also. That is where this government is successful uh, by bringing down fiscal deficit to 4.9%. There's a lot of politics also over what the Bodhi government has announced for the states run by its key allies, the JDU and the TDP. That is Bihar and Andhra Pradesh. The opposition's claim is that this is a budget geared towards appeasing its ally states at the expense of other states. Let's take a look at what's been announced in this particular budget. All right, so this is the announcement for Bihar, 26,000 crores allocated for roads. That's the Vikas Bonanza, where 21,000 crores have been allocated for power. Uh, also, of course, as far as Bihar is concerned, industrial center that is to be set up in Gaya. That was, of course, one big announcement there. Funds for airports, medical colleges as well for Bihar that have been announced. For Andhra Pradesh, 
15,000 crores to build Amravati. That's the state capital and that's been the dream of N. Chandrababu Naidu, TDP Supremo. Grants for backward regions of AP have also been given in this particular budget as far as Andhra Pradesh is concerned. Early completion of the Polavaram project for which there was a separate allotment that has been sought by uh, the TDP. Funds for key road as well as highway projects have also been allocated as far as this particular budget is concerned. So key announcements over there and these are of course put for tourism in Gaya and Bihar uh, where you've seen the Vishnupad temple to be made or developed rather like the Kashi Vishwanath corridor. This is a key announcement for Bihar as well. In both Gaya and Bihar the Mahabodhi temple is to be developed like the Kashi Vishwanath corridor as well. So some very very important uh, Announcements there in Rajgir in Bihar, development of the 20th Tirthankar Temple as well. Important from the perspective of religion as well as tourism is the announcement that has been coming in. Comprehensive developments that are going to be seen and preservation of hot springs at Rajgir as well. This is as far as the Modi budget's push for tourism is concerned and Bihar in particular gaining. In Nalanda as well, there is support for, the, for Nalanda as a tourist centre that's been announced by the centre as far as this particular budget is concerned. All right, let's quickly, in fact, uh, take it across uh, and re reviving Nalanda University as well as one of the announcements. In fact, we have the TDP spokesperson with us, Mr. Ravindra Kumar. What do you make of these announcements? Because opposition is saying that this is nothing but an attempt by the centre to placate its key allies, that is the JDU, as well as the TDP in this case. Are you satisfied with these announcements? This is Ravinder Kumar, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, yes. Yes, sir. The yes. announcements that have Not been made for Andhra Pradesh, care. are you satisfied with them? You I have the opposition some, saying that this is what? nothing but an attempt to placate the allies, including the TDP and the JDU. Your response to that? Not, not, nothing that, like that. But the, it is a long time commitment under the AP Reorganization Act. As per the AP Reorganization Act, the center is expected to fulfill their promises by this time itself. At least in this budget, the Andhra Pradesh has got a minimum share of 15,000 to support the capital. For the last 10 years, you know, that is Andhra Pradesh became a capitalless city for the last 10 years. Now at least 15,000 crores is a support has given to, for this time, this is a welcoming uh, uh, approach. Now, this is Andhra Pradesh, there are long pending issues under AP Reorganization Act, several other issues. This budget doesn't specify about the support to be, nature of support to be given to the Polavaram project. Due to the misrule of the last four, five years of Jagan Mohan Reddy, the Polavara project abandoned, it has sustained huge thousands of crores of loss. Such specific package has to be announced in the budget. Though they have given a specific announcement for encouragement for the Polavara project, it is not sufficient for this time because the Polavara project is a Jevanadi for the people of, not only people of Andhra Pradesh, it is a people of the country. All right, Mr. For Ravindu Kumar, now former <laughs> member of parliament of the Rajasabha from the TDP there speaking, but sir, there's a breaking update coming in. Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister has thanked the Prime Minister and Union Finance Minister Nirbala Sitaraman post the budget presentation for recognizing the needs of his state. He has posted, and I quote, on behalf of the people of Andhra Pradesh, I thank the Honorable Prime Minister and the Honorable Union Finance Minister for recognizing the needs of our state and focusing on capital polavaram as well as industrial nodes and development of backward areas in AP in the union budget of 20 FY25. 24, 25, beg your pardon. This support from the center will go a long way towards rebuilding Andhra Pradesh. I congratulate you on the presentation of this progressive and confidence-boosting budget. Now, this as far as Chandra Babu Naidu is concerned. The allies also giving a big thumbs up for the budget. Civil Aviation Minister Ramo Naidu, is also incidentally from the TDP, has called it a budget for Vikas and says that NDA is committed to Andhra's development. Listen in. This has a very futuristic budget in the sense we are not just uh, uh, creating a foundation for the coming six, eight, six to eight months, but also the coming five to ten years 
and I would like to personally thank uh, the central government for putting a special focus on the development of Andhra Pradesh also. You have seen for the last five years under the leadership of uh, uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy as Chief Minister in the state of Andhra Pradesh, how the whole state has been destroyed. The idea of a capital on Amaravati has been destroyed. The Polavaram project has been destroyed by him. The growth of the state of Andhra Pradesh has been destroyed by him. And right now, the uh, central government has taken uh, uh, focus of that issue and they have given uh, full-fledged support for the uh, state of Andhra Pradesh. So on behalf of five crore people of Andhra Pradesh, I would like to thank the central government and Honorable Min uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. All right, let me take this across to Samajwadi Party spokesperson Vivek uh, Sailas. Vivek Sailas, uh, a short while earlier, we had seen how, you know, the Trinamool Congress had tweeted that uh, it's a budget that's ignored specific opposition states. In that case, they were claiming it's Bengal to benefit the BJP ruled and their allies in the NDA states. Do you share that perception after hearing about these announcements, Vivek Sailas? Yeah, definitely there has been a disparity, uh, you know, between the states, you know, but the 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 states or the the you know the parties which are you know supporting the Modi government in the, in the center are getting more benefits and advantages. It's very evident. It's it's very clear. Even a common man will definitely understand it. But I just hope that uh, what the Bharti and the party has always been saying that this is a every time they come up and say this is a revolutionary budget. It's going to change the future of the country. It is excellent for the youth. It's excellent for employment. This and that. And at the end, end of at the end of the day, what happens, Madhav? At the end of the day, we see uh, inflation increasing and keep it, it keeps on increasing. What we see is uh, the rupee is always falling. Hmm. Uh, it's not even in the top ten uh, currencies of Asia now. That is the, the condition of Indian rupee. You know, the exports are always increasing. Uh, exports are always decreasing, and imports are always. In, in increasing that big, big, uh, that burdens the uh, uh, people of the country. Okay. So nothing very substantial about this budget, but it's very uh, too early to analyze it at the moment. Let's see to, uh, in a day or two. Or Dr. Ragnathan, after, I want you to respond to the charge that he's analyze, making of some kind of bias in terms of allocation that, uh, you know, those who are in opposition or the opposition rule states in particular have been ignored. That's a claim that's been made by TMC being repeated here by the Samajwadi Party. And those who are in alliance with the BJP and BJP rule states have got preference instead. Your response. There is definitely some truth to it. There is no doubt about it. I mean, if you look at the two states prominently mentioned in the budget, they are the states that are ruled by the allies, Bihar and Andhra Pradesh. You yourself mentioned it. The other 27-odd states have not been mentioned to the extent that they used to have. So, yes, there is truth to that. Having said that, the state allocation, you must also remember, over the last 10 years, from the center to the states is dictated by the Finance Commission, and that has increased in terms of percentage. So, and Nirmala Sitaraman rebutted uh, Mr. Siddharamaya, when he said that the center wasn't releasing. So, you know, all that kind of propaganda was busted. So, yes, what he's saying is partly right. But if I may, can I come to, uh, you know, just very uh, uh, quick three points uh, on the issues. I think the um, employment-linked incentive is a good thing. Uh, if indeed this was done after it appeared in the Congress manifesto, that is even better. That means the government is thinking what other parties are thinking. But that is dependent on the BJP, whether it says we thought about it earlier. That doesn't matter. I think it's a good scheme and it is good. Uh, especially it comes at the back of the Skill India mission uh, that was launched in 2015 and that proposed that by 2022 we will scale 400 million Indians and ended up scaling only 14 million. So this is good. Uh, the nuclear push I like very much. Um, uh, you know, one nuclear plant can power 700,000 homes and give carbon emission equivalent to one car. This is the way to go, especially if we want renewable non-fossil fuel energy. Having said that, India's power usage, as far as nuclear is concerned, is only 3%. France mm. is 78%. So we have a long way to go. How many nu nuclear power plants come in, that's another matter. Well, I'll tell you about, you know, when people are, is it a good budget or a bad budget? Just give me 30 seconds. It is as good or as bad as every budget goes. Because as far as I'm concerned, the greatest groundbreaking ideas that this country needs mm. to be 
uh, you know, seen in the list of developed countries mm. are not made in any budget. Mm. The groundbreaking ideas are declared by prime ministers separately, as you've seen, right? Mm. What is the one groundbreaking idea? They were the agricultural reforms. They were made and then they were repealed. And I'll tell you in 30 seconds how uh, they intrinsically linked they are to other groundbreaking ideas. Okay. Believe it or not, 70 million hectares of Indian agricultural land has been damaged in the last six years through drought and floods. 70, that's 40% of Indian agricultural land. Okay. From production to purchase, the entire agricultural sector is in almost ruins. Right. 3,200 billion cubic feet of water from Godavari flows into the ocean every year. The water capacity, availability capacity for Tamil Nadu is half of that. Where is the river linking? We need irrigation. All right. We need, that, so there, import, there, there are of course much larger, bigger, bigger, bigger uh, groundbreaking schemes as you're talking about. But there's a quick uh, update coming in. Leader of opposition in the Lok Sabha, Rahul Gandhi, has put out a tweet. He's targeted the centre over the budget. He's called it a kursi bachao budget. And he also goes on to say, and I quote, appease allies, colon, hollow promises to them at the cost of other states, appease cronies, benefits to AA with no relief for the common Indian copy and paste Congress manifesto and previous budgets. That's a response coming in from Rahul Gandhi. Uh, Dr. Santosh Mehta Atpura, would you like to respond to that? Is there some truth in what Rahul Gandhi is saying? Well, there's truth in the fact that <clears throat> other states are not going to be terribly enthusiastic about Bihar and Andhra getting really good packages. There's no question about it that they have got extremely good packages. Now, the real question then that arises is the following. What kind of impact does this have on the rest of the country? And I believe that this, the following impact will result. And it's actually obvious, it's obvious in the allocations. The first uh, impact is, going to, is, is being seen in the allocations that the two big invest, investments in social infrastructure that are needed for health and education, which are essential ingredients of making India Vikasata Bharat. Uh, health and education have actually seen their allocations cut. Mm. And this has been well below what the, this government itself had promised of uh, in the national health policy of taking health, for instance, public expenditure from 1.1% uh, to 2.5%. It's only up to 1.3% so far, and there's no increase in this one. And education, in their new education policy, they promised that we will take it up to 6 But actually, while in, under the UPA, education budget to GDP used to be 4%, under this government, it's come down to 29 And <clears throat> it, there doesn't seem to be any increase in this budget. Right. right. So there are real issues, matter. Hmm. And then <clears throat> the, the other point I don't think so, that's been made since the morning, uh, which I think everyone is lauding appropriately, that public expenditure on infrastructure has, has been growing, has grown even now. However, <clears throat> you see, in the past, what we noticed that even in the 11th five-year plan, when I, was, when I was in the planning commission, we know that the... A commitment that was made in the, between 2007 and 12 was that we will invest five bill, 500 billion dollars in infrastructure, of which, okay. of which, 50 percent was going to be public, 50 percent was private. Mm. In fact, 50 uh, instead of 50 percent private, it became 62 percent. Mm. Now the opposite is happening now. P private investment is still not increasing, and public investment. Last sentence: public investment. That's of, by the central government is only compensating for the public PSUs. Okay. Use okay, let me reduction. come in now. Let me come reduction. in now. I, I want to bring in Rajat Dhar as well. He's a director of investments of the Indian Investors Federation. From the investors' perspective, Rajat Dhar, we've seen, of course, what's happening as far as the markets are concerned. How do you look at this budget? Uh, this uh, budget has two perspectives. Once they have addressed at the lower rung of the spectrum, so mass market, mass based. Hai. 
On the other end, they have tried to make sure that organically, whatever different sectors, industries, women empowerment, agriculture needs, they have given that. But the irony is that on the overall set of it, the people who are actually the taxpayers have been actually the receiving ends. But even from the individual taxpayer perspective, while we have covered maximum number of points, there are few points that have been missed in this budget, which would have been tantamount. Say, for example, if we need to grow at 7% to 8% every year at the GDP, for that, national savings rate has to be 31 to 32%. For the first time in the last 30 years, we are our national saving rate is at 30%. That means we are lower than what is required to maintain that. That has not been addressed. Or if we feel that you have done 50,000 or 50,000, that will make a huge change. That is our eye wash. So first and foremost, we will not be able to maintain 7% if the national saving rate does not meet. That is point number one. The point number two is, when we talk about infrastructure, there was a news a fortnight back by the banks. They have published that private sector projects approved by the banks have increased by 1 lakh crore. What does this mean? This means private capex has started taking shape. So that means private investments which were not happening into the formal sector have not started hap now started happening. Irony is that this investment is not happening either in roads or railways. Because of the issues of land adhikaran karna, then getting approvals and those, that might be the reason why Bharat Mala is having got into bimbo. So therefore, having said all those things, private companies, even there has been a 38% reduction in dividends mm. by the big companies like TCS and HCL. So if they are not paying dividends, which they are right. historically giving, has actually been gone into investments which they are trying to make uh, uh, the other way around. All right. Other... Let's get in some uh, breaking news coming in. Some of the key BJP allies have now spoken out positively about the budget. This is Chirag Paswan who says that the budget has addressed all sectors. Listen in. I think this is one budget which has uh, fulfilled the aspiration of the people of our country. Uh, for the past over a decade, uh, in Modi government, we have seen that one after the other, the economy of our country has strengthened. And I think this budget has given uh, uh, the, the love to all those people uh, of our country uh, who comes from various sectors of the society, whether they are the farmers, whether they are the youth of our country, whether they are the women of our country, uh, whether there's the middle class of our country. So I think uh, every sector uh, of the society has been taken care of uh, in this budget. बिहार के लिए जो आज घोषणा हुई है वो अभूतपूर्व है बिहार के लिए हम लोग सब दिन से ये मांग करते रहे कि बिहार को विशेष राज्य का दर्जा दीजिए या विशेष पैकेज दीजिए आज बजट भाषण में आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में जो सरकार है और उसने जो बजट भाषण में घोषणा हुई है सरकार की उससे बिहार को जितना चाहिए था उतने हर क्षेत्र में all right, uh, Rohit Azad, you know, no special status has been announced, no special package has been announced yet, but uh, I think that package is going to come in small bits year after year in the budget. So at least that's the indication because all the leaders from Bihar and Andhra Pradesh seem to be all smiles. I think it's a, you know, any budget. I have a few points to make. Uh, a budget should not explicitly be so overtly, uh, you know, saying that, okay, these are the two allies, we are going to help them. I mean, after all, it's a government. It should not explicitly do that, but it has. And those compulsions are there. Having said that, I think in terms of the tax, let me just come to that first. Perhaps what they could have done is they could have increased uh, a slab. They could have put a slab and at the upper end of the income spectrum and increased the tax there and given rebate to the middle class. That is what they could have done because that would have also tackled inequality. Mm. India happens to be one of the most unequal nations currently. Additionally, it could have thought of something like a wealth tax, again, at the top end. These are the things which would have mobilized funds. You could have given rebate to the middle class instead of the 17,500, the number that we have been discussing. That's point number one. The other thing about ELI, while it is welcome, I think it's at best a supporting thing. It may help, but not right. ensure employment. I think firms are going to employ people only if there is demand in the economy. They would not employ people merely because there's credit availability or you're giving incentives for employment. Why will I employ anybody if I know that my products are not going to sell? Hmm. Last point, and that's where I would end, is in terms of the allocation. So if you look at the budget now in the fine print, what needs to be compared is what you 
estimate it for and what you actually spent because i can you know promise the moon but in the end i'm not actually spending so i'll give you just three uh, figures in energy in health and education these three the budgeted uh, figure was 94000 uh, uh, crores uh, last time okay and that as actual spending is 54000 okay. similarly for health 88 to 79 uh, for education 1.16 lakh it's 1.0 it so it has actually come down now after that if i promise something much higher there is a suspect that whether right. you are actually going to spend ordered right. one one more thing sorry we're almost out of very quickly yeah. quickly 10 seconds make your point schemes yeah. his own schemes i i looked at it ayushman pmi and pm portion in each of these actually the revised estimates are far lower than the promise okay. so it's a serious concern that needs to okay. be okay okay quick response from mr jagannath very quick response to that yeah i mean uh, the see you know you have a budget right if you try to move it in one direction somewhere else is going to be cut huh? that's exactly what has happened you have to rob peter to pay paul huh? <laughs> so if uh, bihar and andhra have to begin slightly better deal but overall for india it's a good thing if the poorest state gets investment and a new state which is struggling for resources because of the bad way in which it was divided is also getting resources so the india should not uh, say, after all if you are going to build infrastructure you might as well do it in stages okay now we are doing and let's not forget that even the eastern states as a whole have got a th- uh, thing when he talks about purva there hmm. it is not just bihar it is also includes jharkhand it includes west bengal it includes orissa and same thing when you talk about flood control help and all that you are uh, d- during uh, himachal congress ruled straight then you have uttarakhand of course bjp right but everybody is getting some help okay. maybe not chapar uh, phad ke nahi mila lekin <laughs> kuch to mila hai na okay okay <laughs> dr jagnathan dr anand jagnathan and in fact uh, rohitan sidwa on this side dr santosh mehrotra rohit azad rachad dhar like to thank you as well as tehsin pura wala vivek sela so been joining us from outside as well as k ravindra kumar and uh, also earlier rohan gupta